today, we're going to be venturing beyond some of the topics we've already covered in our first four webinars, and we're going to be talking about post-pandemic and post-reopening. The idea, of course, is mostly focused on the students who would benefit, but at the same time, there are millions of people who are unemployed, and particularly new graduates uh, from colleges and universities. How do we not only leapfrog the quality of education that we're giving to all of our children, but how do we do that for kids who have lost a lot of education over the last six months and counting? A lot of the factors, the same social determinants, the same comorbidities related to the disproportionate infection, hospitalization, um, and death experienced by people of color in the pandemic are the same factors that are related to achievement inequality and differences in educational opportunity. What we have in hand, if we have the will, that we've got the, the capacity, we've got the, the programs, we've got the knowledge to make sub a substantial difference in schools. And I hope that the, that the COVID experience will enable us to, to learn that. Changing structures or systems that are getting in the way of serving all of our children and opening the doors of opportunity for every child. And that if you can tell a story like that, I think you might be able to find um, some support for federal investment. Well, I can tell you my immediate terror, which is that uh, kids, when they finally go back to school, the teacher will say, well, welcome back, kids. I'm so glad to see you. Now let's open up to page 327 when we left off last March. The Marshall Plan was, and, and you mentioned this too, it's, it wasn't just about buildings. It was about, to some degree, it was about building democracy. Until we get to that type of racial reasoning and move toward racial reform, we're not going to solve the problem. Instead, we will have to have Bob's solution of hiring tutors. When, if we would get to more fundamental issues, we wouldn't need tutors in the first place. These are structural impediments that absolutely, to Otis's point, play out much more severely in some communities than others. That is what we should strive for, that we get those social um, resources in place, that we all commit to a type of racial democracy and racial justice, and then we strive for resilient educational institutions that can actually uh, respond to crises instead of folding, um, as many have in this current pandemic. If we could demonstrate that we could make a major difference in many, many, many children using something powerful and proven like tutoring, uh, that would be a demonstration that we don't have to accept the situation that existed before COVID. The problem that Benjamin Rush and Horace Mann and John Dewey set out to solve, maybe our public school system actually isn't doing a very good job solving any of that. And I think that starts to open a whole bunch of conversations uh, that can go any number of ways about what it looks like going forward.